Hey everyone, it's Adam for realhomerecording.com. In today's video, I will be reviewing the Audio Technica AT8202 adjustable inline attenuator. All this thing does is it lowers the volume. You put it between your microphone cable and your mixer, and it lowers the volume. I use it on my hi hat microphone. You can use it on anything that's too loud for your preamp. Um, I, I could have used it on the guitar amp we were recording with or the uh, direct box. But um, what I want to do today with this thing is see actually how good the audio quality is. And what I'm going to do is take this CD player. Oh, you were supposed to follow me, but whatever. Take this CD player. I'm going to hook a cable into the camera. I'm going to record it. And I'm going to stick this thing in, so I'm going to record 30 seconds of each. Um, there's a 10 decibel adjustment, a 20 decibel, and a 30 decibel attenuation. And I'm going to record all three, and then I'm going to see how good the quality is versus when this thing's not in the uh, in line. And then um, I'm also going to compare it. Is it actually 10 decibels or 20 decibels or 30 decibels by uh, messing with the audio mixer? So that's it, let's get started. Okay, so what I did is I took all the recordings that I did and I'll put that at the end of the video or something because I recorded it so I may as well um, and you get to see a relic of the past <laughs> in the uh, the Sony Discman. Anyway, so at the top here we have the non-attenuator track and then we had the three going down in order starting with negative 10 decibels attenuation, then negative 20 down here, and then negative 30. And they're all lined up. And what I'm gonna do is play them so we can see over here on the meters what their actual measurements are. So I'm gonna start and play it all the way through. wasn't thinking about her cause she wasn't around Then temptation started checking me out and they wiggled on over She had the booty wrapped up in a skin tight dress A pirate said I'm sinking my relationship Now she's showing me her treasure chest that I'm ready to fly Okay, so as we can see they're not exactly, you know, negative 10 decibels to the digital point we got to remember this is analog gear but i wanted to see that anyway like how how much does it actually change from the original signal and um so there's the numbers oh man you know it's it's tough to see the screen sometimes because i have to reduce it because my screen is actually not 1080p it's like 1050 but it's not as wide, so it scrunches it down. So let me get my magnifying glass out and my calculator, and then I'll let you know in a second what these measurements say. Okay, if my eyes and calculations are correct, we have for the negative 10 decibel pad an approximate negative 11.4 decibel attenuation. For the negative 20, we have a negative 21.8. And for the negative 30 decibels of attenuation, we have negative 31.7. So close, not exactly the same. But, you know, again, this is analog gear, so it may not have a, um, it may, you know, it's, it's not perfectly linear. So we see that it's not the same as me taking one of these slider knobs in, in the box here and you know reducing it negative 30 decibels you know it's just not going to happen like if i would take this track right here and then change this meter to negative 10 let's see what it does and i'm going to reset the meter again the original number was negative 30.8 
Okay, so it's an exact negative 40.8, so exactly negative 10 decibels from the original. That's what digital math gets you. That's what digital processing gets you versus a piece of analog gear. So, you know, if, if that bothers you too much, then hey, you know, don't get this device. But to me, a, what, let's see, one and a half decibel approximately deviation from the exact that's not going to kill me. But let's, just for the sake of argument, bring these up. By the way, these are all lo line in on my camera. They are, there's a line in option so that there's no preamp. I did also record a preamp signal because as you can see, the signal is really, really low. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to bring up the... Um, the original track, I'm going to bring this up 29 decibels. Actually, I'll just do it 30. Let's just bring it up 30. And then the rest of these I'm going to bring up so they're exactly the same volume as this. And I'm going to bring them over so that we can play them back to back. Now, there's going to be noise added, of course, but what I'm looking for is how close to the original they sound. Okay, I think I got it now. I had the master mix knob up. I, I forgot I had that. So now these tracks should be okay to play back to back. Again, we're going to have noise. And then there's also, we got to remember the converter quality is only 16 bit on my camera. Um, and of course, the fact that we're going to be raising a signal 80 decibels doesn't help anything. But um, that's why I did the preamp version, which you'll see in a second. But this is all because I want to see how good this attenuator is at just reducing the quality um, by a, a volume. I want to see how good that is because I don't want something that's going to destroy the quality of my signal too much if at all, if it can be avoided. I mean, you got to remember this inline attenuator is not cheap. So we'll see. Okay, again, that's without the attenuator. And then here's with plus a 41 decibel increase. Okay. Doesn't sound too bad. So we'll go to the 30, uh, actually, what is this? 51, right? Yeah, 51.8 increase. She had the booty wrapped up in a skin tie. She had the booty wrapped up in a skin tie. She had the booty wrapped up in a skin tie dress. A pirate said, I'm sinking my relationship now. She should. Well, number one, I'm starting to hear digital quantization noise. Again, the signal is just really quiet. Even even without um, the attenuator, it was like negative 30 decibels or a little bit less when I recorded this. I'll double check right now. Yeah, so the signal's already low to begin with. Um, so we're adding quantization noise. This is where 24-bit comes in handy. Um, but yeah, very, very quiet signal. We're talking like negative 60 decibels or so. The town, I wasn't thinking about her because she wasn't around. And temptation started checking me out and it wiggled on over. She had the booty wrapped up in a sky. I was living it up. I was out on the town. I wasn't thinking. I was living it up. I was out on the town. I wasn't. I 
wasn't thinking about her cause she wasn't a friend Temptation started checking me out and they wiggled on over She around and temptation started checking me out and they wiggled on over And temptation started checking me out and they wiggled on over A pirate said I'm sinking my relationship Okay, so I'm not hearing as full of a signal with the negative 20 decibel attenuation, but I think that has to do with how low the signal itself was recorded. You got to remember when these things are actually used, they're used to bring a loud signal down to record at nominal levels, which this wasn't even recorded at a nominal level. So I think we're hearing more of a result of a low signal recording, but I'll tell you what, it still sounds good. Even though there's a quantization noise, the frequency response is still pretty nice. Forgot to boost this back to where it was. Okay, now on to the originally negative 30 decibel attenuation. Now it should be at about the same level, but you're going to hear a lot more noise. Ooh. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Let me make sure my cal you know what my calculation was wrong. It should have been it should have been 60 61.7, not 80. I don't know what I was thinking there, but all right, let's let's go back to here. My math is done. I was decent in high school, and now I'm mediocre. <laughs> you hear that noise? That's that 16-bit noise. Yeah, this is uh, lovely. Quantization noise plus um, just noise from the aut the analog circuitry too. So, um, but it, it's not a fair comparison. I mean, you know, this is why you gain stage properly <laughs> and don't record. Um, what is it? Negative sixty decibels. Yeah. But anyway, let's go to the preamp ones because it's a fair comparison. By the way, I'm gonna I'm going to provide all these files to you guys so that you can make your own comparisons and you know because of YouTube's compression. So um you know I try to do that with any gear reviews. So these are all gonna be um yeah, like forty eight kilohertz files. Okay, so anyway, back to this. So again, this is recorded with a preamp. So I'm going to reset all these and play it back right now. So, but the preamp may have changed the frequency response, but it's louder, obviously. So maybe this won't go too loud. Hold on. Let me do this just in case. I forgot to reset the numbers. Boo, boo, boo. Now she's showing me her 
All right, so on the test files that I'll give you guys links to, what I'll probably do is just put everything in a zip file so that you can just click that and download that um, and not have to click, what's this, like eight different files. So it'll all be in the same as a WAV file. You know what? It'll be a FLAC file just so it's a little bit, um, it's compressed more, losslessly compressed. So anyway... Obviously, we have a louder signal, so I'm going to do some more math and get back with you in a second. All right, after doing some math, we have the original signal at negative 14.9, then the 10 decibel attenuated signal at 26.2 for a negative 11.3 deviation. Uh, and then we have the negative 20 decibel attenuation is at 36.7. So it's actually negative 21.8 decibels, which is equal to what it was in the line input um, test. And then on the, uh, the final negative 30 decibel attenuation, we have it at 46.7. So it's negative 31.8 decibels from the original signal, which is just a tenth of a decibel difference from the line input test, which was at 31, negative 31.7. So we have um, the negative 20 and the negative 30 were actually right on point with this test. And, um, and also the negative 10 was only a decibel or a, a 0.1 decibel difference from the line input test as well. So we at least have some consistency there. It's not exactly negative 10 decibels. It's not exactly negative 20 or negative 30, but it's close. So what I'm going to do, these will all be called like mic preamp test files or whatever. You'll, you'll see it in the file, in the zip file. But what I want to do is the same thing that we did last time, which is bring all these over and play them. You know what? I'm not going to make the video any longer. You guys can check these out. I will play them very fast. I'm not going to get into it. I'll just play them like for about a minute, go back and forth between all of them. You can play the files yourself because YouTube's audio compression, there's just no point in doing this, but I'll let you know what I think after I listen to these. So let me do some math again and get back to you. Okay, here we go. So th this is the math. So you guys can do this at home. Um, it might be different on your meters, but you can see that's how I boosted it for each one. So let's start. And by the way, these will be changed from line in to, uh, I'll just call it mic pre or mic preamp on those file names. So here we go. I wasn't thinking about 
about her cause she wasn't around And the temptation started checking me out And they wiggled on over She had the booty wrapped up in a skin-tight dress A pirate said I'm sinking my relationship So there we go. I think it sounds pretty damn good. I'm not really hearing much of a quality difference, maybe a, um, a lack of low end, but that be that could be because the signal is low on the converter or on the preamp. Um, but I don't know if that's the uh, the actual preamp. I'm sorry, the the attenu- So I don't know if that's the attenuator or if that's my preamp slash converter. Either way. I think that we have a good product here. I'm not really hearing a huge quality difference. So if you're looking for an attenuator, an inline attenuator, which again, I use it all the time on my hi-hat microphone, but you can use it wherever. Um, I know sometimes keyboards are too loud for direct inputs or active guitars, active bass guitars or electric guitars. They have issues if you go to a preamp that doesn't have a pad. And even if you have one that has a pad, I had, um, when we were recording guitar, it was way too loud on the, on the DI. Even the, the 10 decibel pad was not enough. So, um, you know, going to the preamp. So we could have used this. I didn't even think about it, but we could have used this so that my preamp wasn't all the way at zero. <laughs> and, um, you know, I was worried about it going in there too loud, but um, I ended up pretty much using the microphone, a real microphone and real guitar cabinet on all those tracks. So it didn't really make a difference anyway. But again, the Audio Technica AT8. 202, I believe that's the correct serial number. I'm, I apologize if it's not. I don't, I don't have the product in front of me, but I, it's the 80, it's the inline attenuator. It's got three settings, so you can use it in any occasion. It's versatile. It's high quality. I definitely recommend it if you need it. Um, if you can only get something that only has one setting, I would say go for something that has a negative 20 because it's, you know, it's better to have too little than too much because you could always raise it up and noise reduce. <laughs> but um, this thing is great because I might ne- need negative 30. I might need negative 20. I might just need negative 10. So you never know what you need, but usually I use a negative 20 and I'm good. But um, yeah, anyway, I talked too much. This has been Adam for realhomerecording.com.